The first step is to go to the Quartus website. You can find it using Google. And then you actually want to sign in first because it will ask you to sign in later anyway. If you don't have an account, you can create one. It is free. Takes a little while. Once you have signed in, you need to go back and make sure that you've selected the right version. Even if you did that initially, it can get changed. So we want the light edition because it's free and we're using 18.1. You then scroll down and we need to get two files. We need to get the updates and we also need to get the combined files. So go down to combine files first. Click on the download button. Agree. And then wait a long time. You may as well grab the updates while you're waiting. So once one download started, you can go back up. Grab the next one. Notice the text in red. You need to be a little bit careful how you are going to unzip the tar files, untie the tar files. I'll show you how I did it. I used 7-zip and it will work nicely. Go to 7-zip, choose the 64-bit version, download it, click it to install, then you select the downloaded tar files from the Quartus website. Here with 7-zip select extract here. Do the same with the other file. Remember one is the Quartus 18.1, the other one is the update for Quartus 18.1. Now we can go to the directory 18.1.0, click on setup. and click next, agree, next, agree with the default installation location, accept the default settings, and installation will take quite a while. Once installation's done, go back to the 18.1.1 update, Go to the 18.1.1 directory, run the setup program, click next, agree, accept the default location, which is on top of the 18.1 version we just installed, but go and disable the allow patches. If you read the comments below it, it says that you're going to use another 12 gigabytes of disk space and slow things down. We do not need the ability to uninstall patches, so deselect this option here, then do next. And again, it's going to take a long time to install. Okay, once we're done, we're going to have to restart the computer. Then we're back, we've got Quartus on our desktop, double click there for it to start up. New project wizard. Next, go to our own directory. Don't start writing over the Intel Quartus install location. So I've chosen to go to documents, create a new folder for the project that I'll be working on. I'm just going to call it timing, select that folder. then name of the project, and the next line is the name of the top level entity. For timing, we cannot use Cyclone 5. Almost anything else will, will work. I just chose an arbitrary Cyclone 4 FPGA. Here under simulation, we're going to select Model Sim Altera. Now we don't have to do it here, we could do it later, but notice Model Sim Altera and Verilog HDL and finish. Go up and create a new Verilog file. In this file we'll just have a very simple program. 
Remember the module, top level module name must agree with what we told it at the setup time, which is timing. And the output's just going to be the inverse of the input. Save it. Create a new file for our test bench. Remember the module name as we will need to know it later. Wire up our top level module, timing. Generate some input. Initially set in to zero. Then for three times we are going to wait for 10 units of time and then toggle the input. Now how long is 10 units of time? Well, we don't have a timescale statement yet. It's crucial that we have a timescale statement up here. And we also want to have the second number smaller than the first number so that we get good resolution. Save this file, untick add file to current project because it's not part of the uh, not part of the very log that gets compiled and put under the FPGA. Go to settings, make sure we have model sin Altera, very log HDL. I selected that when I created the project. Now here under more EDA, this is the tricky option that somewhere along the lines ended up being switched on. We need it off. If this is on, it will only generate functional simulations. Then we compile test bench, have to select it, click on test benches, new. We need to know our test bench name, the module name, and we need to add the file that it's in. Need to click the add button after we've selected it so it appears in the list below, then click OK. And then that's it, press OK. And one other thing to check, under Options, EDA Tool Options, that we have the correct path in here under Model Sim Altera. Compile the whole program. If you want to do pin assignments, you can just compile the program and not do all the other steps, then do your pin assignments. I'm not going to worry about pin assignments because Quartus is set up to automatically assign pins for me. It will give me a warning saying that that's what it's done, but it will assign pins for me. When everything's done, we quickly check the warning and error messages. Of course, it's unhappy that we don't have any timing provided, but we've got no clocks in this design, so it doesn't matter because there are no clocks in our design. Then we're ready to do our simulation. Select gate level simulation, select the slow timing model and run it. When the wave window comes up, we select it. That will then allow us to press the zoom button and we find that the gate level simulation worked wonderfully.